So our next guest says the banking industry is back to being a boring business, and that is a good thing. I want to bring in Mike Mayo, senior bank analyst at Wells Fargo. We've got a lot to discuss about the banking business, including uh, the travails and future saga of Citigroup and other uh, institutions. Um, you've got something in your hands. Yes. What are, you, would... what are you holding? Well, Citigroup is Whoa. my dominant number one pick. And what I say here is, let's go. Citigroup reorg, take 13. Take 13. Take 13, the 13th okay. restructuring. The lucky at lucky 13 is what you're saying? For here? Citigroup, everything's a little upside down, but this time is different. The lucky for, 13. <laughs> this time is different for Citigroup. They finished seven months of what they called org simplification, and people said they were going to implode, they were going to lose revenues, lose customers, and guess what? They had the best first quarter. They beat expectations by one-third, top line, bottom line, and it's going really well. They maintain their best of industry guidance for 2024, and guess what? Over the next three years, we have earnings doubling. Right. Goldman Sachs, we have up 70%. No other bank is up 50%. Okay, so, so that, but this is a stock right now, call it, call it 62 bucks for now. You think 12 months from now, at the rate they're going, or call it even 24 months from now, given your, your long-term outlook for this company is what? So we have earnings going from $5 a share last year to $10 a share in 2026. We have them getting over a double-digit return on equity. You haven't okay. seen that for a while. That gets them to tangible book value, which means a double in Citigroup stock, somewhere around $110 to $120 a share. A double in the stock. I a double this, in the stock during in what time period? Uh, by the end of 2026. So we're talking, what, two years and three-quarters away. And by the way, what else does that say that says... The direct, put it up on there because everyone can see here. Citigroup Reorg, take 13. The director is Mike Mayo, just so we're clear here. And the date is the present. Okay, so we'll see if you have to come back and erase that and do take 14 and see what, what it actually says. The, the difference this time is this restructuring is creating five lines of business. It's services, banking, markets, consumer, and wealth. This is similar to what Procter & Gamble did five years ago. That was the most successful restructuring in the consumer staple space, according to our analyst at Wells Fargo, Chris Carey. And it's similar now. Citigroup's going to five lines of business. And you can hold, you have more transparency, accountability. And a number of those businesses are very competitive businesses already. I mean, like the wealth business is a competitive business. I concede wealth. That's 10% of the company. I don't know where that's going to go. They say that's going to improve. They have Andy C. Great. But... 80% of the company is very well positioned at Citigroup. You have the global payments or services business, best in class, 25% of the company, markets and banking, as you know, top five global investment bank, and a top three credit card player. That's 80% of the company. So don't, those people saying Citigroup, you know, I will never own it, that's wrong, okay, because 80% of the company is structurally okay, so positioned. every bank out there right now, this is, this is your top pick. This is my dominant top pick. Now, look, I recommend... What's you know, your number two and three pick right now? Well, Goliath is winning, is working. Okay, so Bank America and J.P. Morgan are my number two and three pick, kind of tied. Uh, they are benefiting from the diversification, but not too much commercial real estate. That's still an issue. Okay. CRE is TBD, to be determined. Yep. It's going to play out over a few years. Not a whole lot of commercial real estate exposure. On the other hand, you're, you're generating uh, deposits. And for these three banks and the industry, you're talking about a multi-year EPS inflection point um, because you're having earnings for the industry go down probably 20% by the end of this year. So you're playing for 25 and 26 when earnings go up by one third. You're having revenues go from negative to positive. You're having traditional banking revenues, net interest income going from negative to positive, operating leverage from negative to positive, provisions from a headwind to a tailwind. It's going in the right direction. It's been a long wait, but that time is coming to own more bank stocks. We got to run. Is there a bank right now you do not want to own? Uh, look, there's several banks with commercial real estate exposure, and I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm just not sure it's going to be good. So there's a series of regional banks here, whether it's, you know, Comerica or M&T or Regions or Zions. I'm just, you know, if you want a cheap stock, go with Citigroup. They're trading at 30 percent discount to tangible book value. OK, Mike Mayo, uh, save that and we will. Uh, there will not we'll, be we'll, a take 14. This is no it. take 14. OK, there it is. I hope you have a prop on television.